Hi, Carol. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> Kendra, you with your two big eyes. Good afternoon to you as well. Yes. <laughs> and all my folks who already tuned in this afternoon. Folks, let me first apologize to you folks um, for the sort of late start, 15-20 minutes late. It was no fault of mine. Where I am this afternoon, we're going to have a little fun before we start. Um, but I had some visitors this afternoon, so I had to let these visitors kind of, you know, get out from the frame a little bit before I really start, started the live because I didn't want them to kind of interfere with what was happening here or what is about to happen here this afternoon. It is some students who came from a bus, who came on a bus, sorry, but I was told by one of them, they came all the way from Vikas, Tibo, and the nearby surrounding. And I guess they just came for some fun, to have some fun this afternoon. And they came exactly the time that I approached here. And so I did not want to start the live and have that disturbance, you know, back and forth by them. And it's a public place, so I cannot, you know, have them not enjoy themselves. So... I had to wait about 15-20 minutes. Now they are gone. They have gone to another location where they are still enjoying themselves. But away from the from our business here each and every Saturday. Hi Carla, good afternoon to you. So we'll be starting in just a little, little while. We'll be having a very fun time before we start in NST. But I can tell you the information that will be dispense this afternoon from my life will be very very educational very very interesting all right i'm just waiting for a little number of persons again to join us so we can start in just a while a lot of you already saying that the scenery in the foreground is very beautiful yes i acknowledge that i love nature i'm a nature's boy so <laughs> And this afternoon, I can tell you, the rain has really, really subsided. Um, for the better part of the week, we had a lot of rain. But this afternoon, Saturday afternoon, it is bright, sunny. So I decided, you know something? Let me go in my natural habitat to have our little discussion together. Um, when I saw the rain in the week, I was kind of disturbed a bit saying that, whoa. I will have to be confined, confined, sorry, to my home. But the good Lord said, no, you will be where you love. And that is in the out and open. So folks, yes, good afternoon. Today being the 3rd of October, um, 2020. Let me say a special good afternoon to all those of you already tuned in to the live. What I always ask of you is that... I'll be asking that question in a while, Mr. Vita, Mr. Vidal. So just hold the horses a little while. Um, yeah, it's the 3rd of October, as I said, and it's another time of engagement with us. Every Saturday, as I promised some time back, at least a month and a week thereabout, I said every Saturday afternoon, I'll be bringing you, the Dominican people, be you in Dominica or be you out there somewhere, in the worldwide community we'll be having a little discussion about your country my country which is our country <clears throat> so that is what we'll be having this afternoon today being the third of october 2020 we are in the we are steering down the the independent season um by now last year before you'd have been hearing a lot of creole festival activities but COVID had other plans this year, and so we'll not be having any Creole festival this year, but we'll still be celebrating our culture, which starts in October and ends somewhere on the 4th of November. All right? We'll still be having our celebrations as we try our very best to, to stay away from COVID. But that will not keep us from celebrating our culture in Dominica. Now, this afternoon, folks, in terms of a little fun before we start, can anybody tell me where 
I am this afternoon. Can anybody tell me where I have you looking at this afternoon? I'm waiting for some responses. Before I turn the camera in another direction and basically give it away. Can anybody tell me where I am this afternoon? I am somewhere out there in Dominica and if you know Dominica very well you can take a wild guess and tell me where I'm at this afternoon. No Mr. Matthew, Ronnie Rui, it's not Cabrits, no it's not Cabrits. Please try again Ronnie. Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody else? We have at least Scott's head between the two oceans. Yes, Kerry. Thank you very much, my brother. You, you got it this afternoon. All right. So Kerry got it right on point. We are Kenny. Not Kenny. Kerry. Kerry Lockhart Savage got it very, very spot on this afternoon. We are at the village, the beautiful village of Scott's head. And that is, he said it right, he even zeroed in on, Kerry, are you from Scott's Head by any chance? <laughs> between the two oceans, that is between the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. So thank you very much, my brother Kerry, for being so astute this afternoon in terms of your answering my question this afternoon. So folks, let me just pan the camera now, seeing that Kerry have basically walked away with the price this afternoon where I'm at. Yes. I am in the beautiful village of Scott's Head. The camera is facing in the direction of Soufrier. So I guess that is why some of you did not get it by just watching it. But let me just pan the camera now to the village of Scott's Head in particular. Okay, that is, that is Scott's Head right here. Alright, that is Scott's Head right there. Alright, that is the strip leading up to where I'm at now. Kerry says from Cassibrus. So Kerry, how you know how you know Sufria Scott said so good? <laughs> Alright. So let me just pan that camera in a direction in another direction. So that is the way I had to walk this afternoon. That is that strip between the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. And then I walked up that road coming up that little mountain there and I am right up on top the beautiful scenery here in Scott's Head. Let me just show you as well. That is the that is the antenna right here from Lime. I think Lime has this antenna erected right here. Most of you when you come into Dominica especially by boat you will see this strobe light flashing like every three to five seconds. Yeah, let me just pan on that strobe light so you can see it flashing away. It basically serves as a, it serves as a, a beacon, a point, so that especially the mariners out at sea, those who go to fish, can at least have a better way of finding their way back home all right let me just pan it in the other direction so i can give you a better idea of where we are at as well that is the mountain in the background okay now all that folks is basically the the the, the scott said area now here is a very interesting place in terms of our historical aspect to it i'll just be going through a little part of why this place is so rich in history before i start the discussion this afternoon where i really want to get us to focus on this afternoon and by the way i'll be focusing this afternoon on primarily mr dennis byron i'll be giving us some reasons why what we will be answering some questions this afternoon 
Uh, so the invitation of Sir Dennis Byron to our country to do anything to do with electoral reform. All right? Let me just pan that down to the B side so you can have a better view. That is the B. That is the B here, people. All right? That is the B. That is where a lot of snorkeling, a lot of diving, a lot of sea beavers normally come to do their thing right there. All right? Right in that bay right here. The fisher folks from Scots Head, from Sufre, that body of water there serves as their source of livelihood, most of them, because it's, it's primarily, predominantly a fishing village. And yes, that body of water is very, very crucial to their livelihood and continued sustenance. Okay? Let me show you right now this here. This is a cannon right here. That is an old cannon right here that was erected by the British when they held Dominica under dominance from the French. We know Dominica is a little country in the region. Many battles were fought over and over, both by the French and the British to have control over Dominica. So that is one of the cannons right here that the British in particular used in defense of Dominica to protect Dominica from the invasion from the French forces. All right, so that is a remnant of one of the cannons right here. Where we are, folks, here was a, a fortress. Here was a, a barrack erected right here with protection so that any invading forces those who control Dominica in the time in their day they would use here as a base Scots had been in the south of Dominica so they had a good um, view panoramic view that is of the invading forces as you can see in the foreground it just gives a little snapshot if you look in the foreground all the way to the all the way out I don't know if you can notice it but from my vantage point I can see Layu all right right down I can see the tip of Layu okay so that 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 gives you an idea of how far that the persons who once upon a time owned Dominica, so to speak, they had a vantage point for protecting this country. All right? Good. Now, what I want to bring us to enjoy as well this afternoon is some of the some of the little memorabilia that have been set up by Lennox Honeychurch and his team to help us understand. So we're just going to take a little walk now so that we can go and see some of the little memorabilia that Lennox Honeychurch and his team of persons set up here in order that persons visiting here like myself and others can have a better understanding of what went on there some time back way back in our history we have like one two three four in coming up i saw about three more so we have about seven of those little um concrete blocks erected serving as part of the memorabilia that is erected here in order that persons visiting here could have a much better understanding of what went on there. So I'll just be giving you a sneak peek of some of them and I'll be also trying to explain some of them. So that is one. This one says look enough. Um, we have the Mon Diablote. If you look north, you can see here Mon Diablote is erected right here. Inscribed right here. We have Guadeloupe and the Saints. That is looking enough. So that is looking in that direction. Okay. Here was also used as a flaming site. 
or is also used as a Fleming site, I must say. All right. <clears throat> we also have Mon Patat. If you look right, you will be seeing that as well. Galleon is on the side over here. All right. You have Scott said village, which is right here, where we are today. So that is basically one of the memorabilia. Um, we have another one here, which is the fun facts. It tells us about, it tells you more about Dominica, some fun things you can do when you come to Dominica. Okay, so that is compliments Lennox Honey Church and his team who erected those. All right, it's very, very educational material that is there. We have the first, we have a, a picture here of a first plane, a first seaplane. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. You can see that first seaplane there. It says, <clears throat> it talks about that first seaplane that landed in Dominica. And the Kalinago, our brothers and sisters, how they impacted a Dominica in one way, shape, or the other. Let's move to another one. Let's move to another one. I will just be trying to go through at least one in the interest of time for us. Um, yes, I think this one interests me very, very much. The one of Sir George Scott. Okay. Here's a map of Dominica right here. And as well a write-up which I'll be going through in just a while but this one the George Scott um, memorabilia I will be dealing with that in just a while but let me just go to give you an idea of the last one that is mounted up here and I'll go back to the George Scott one in a while to explain to us some things that went on right here Okay, this one talks about the battles, the many battles that I spoke of before between the French and the English for the capture of Dominica. Okay, it gives a picturesque view of some of the fierce battles that went on for our country, Dominica. Okay, let me just give you an idea of what this one says and then we'll move across. It says here, the, the battles fought on the 7th of September, 1778. The French launched a surprise attack on Dominica. They crossed the channel from Matnik with almost 3,000 men. Their first obstacle was the fort at Kashakru. That is right where we are now. Remember I told you there used to be a fortress before. But this was easily taken. The night before, local French inhabitants who were informed about the surprise attack, visited the fort and entertained the British soldiers until they were properly drunk. Then they spiked the cannons with sand. As a result, the French soldiers stormed the fort and the following morning with little resistance. Rousseau surrendered later that day and Dominica was occupied by the French for the next five years. For a brief period, France controlled St. Lucia Martinique, Dominica, and Guadeloupe. Okay, the last paragraph reads here, following the British victory at the Battle of the Saints in April 1782, Dominica was returned to the British by the Treaty of Versailles in 1783. Okay, that is what this monument tells us here. That is a translation in French as well for you, fo for you folks who are French speaking. Let me just get back to the more interesting one. Why Scott's Head is named or was named Scott's Head. Let me just let you as well take a look at this one. It says here, military, George Scott, 1722 to 1616, not to 1767, was Lieutenant Governor of Dominica from 1764 to 1767 during the first years of British colonization of the island. At the time, Dominica was a unit of the British colony of the South Caribbean Islands. Scott began directing the construction of a military defense system 
for the island and established the first fort in Kashaku Point. The British renamed its Scots head after the lieutenant governor. He was in command of Dominica until he was killed by an English planter, Alexander Campbell, in a duel in November of 1767. Okay, that is where I really want to start, folks. So let me just go back to the lovely viewpoint so I can give us a proper or better understanding of that man, Mr. George Scott. And then we'll take it from there. Because I always like to give us a little bit of our history so we can better understand where we came from as a people and where we ought to be as a people. Okay, let me just set up that my stand right here. Good. Now people, Mr. Mr. George Scott that we saw earlier, he basically He basically, the read-up said, was a governor. Okay, Aura, thank you very much, but rather late than never. He basically, George Scott, was a governor in Dominica from the year 1764 to 1767. Now, this little village here, Scott's Head, um... There is, a, there is a myth that, is, that has been circulating about the naming of Scott's Head. Um, even I, for example, was taught in school that Mr. George Scott, he was killed here and his head was hung on a stick. And as a result, this village was renamed after him as being Scott's Head. But let me, folks, categorically deny that myth. I, I did do some research this afternoon and confirmed what I'm going to tell you by at least two of our leading historians in Dominica. And they did confirm to me that the name Scott's Head, the reason why it is named Scott's Head, it is really not the reason that has been circulating around and even teachers told or even still telling their students that myth about this man George Scott he was killed and his head was laid on a stick and was displayed in the public and it was renamed after that brutal attack on Mr. George Scott I can categorically deny that this afternoon by at least, as I said, two historians who know their onions. And they said, that is the furthest thing from the truth. Why I am being told that Scott's head is named Scott's head is that when the British ruled Dominica, this man, Mr. George Scott, he was the governor of Dominica for some time. And that time in question was, as I said before, from 1764 to 1767. So he was the governor, or I can say the deputy governor of Dominica. Because the governor at the time, I am being told, was based in Grenada. So we could say he was the in charge of Dominica, yes. But the governor, itself was, governor himself was based in Grenada. So he was basically like a deputy to the governor, but headed to Dominica to carry out his British duties. Um, the, 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 the reason, for example, some person said that Scott's head was named after George Scott, after this brutal killing... And his head was displayed. As I said, his head was never displayed. A matter of fact, if you go now in the Anglican cemetery in Newton, I've been, I'm being told, you can see a, a tomb or a headstone 
of Mr. George Scott. That is where his body was laid. Yes, I can confirm that he died in a very... Um, he was mortally wounded. But how that killing came about, and it is very, very interesting. Huh? Back in the days, people, especially the persons of high repute back then, when they had their quarrels or their fights or whatever they had, when they disagreed with one another on very um, serious terms and tones, they basically settled their disputes by, by fighting. And I guess we maybe as a people got that fighting tradition, for want of a better term, from the persons who ruled Dominica before. In the case of Mr. George Scott, you remember I mentioned a name as he was a planter back then, Mr. Alexander Campbell. Mr. George Scott, he being the governor of Dominica, he and Mr. Alexander Campbell, they had a, 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 a feud between them. Mr. George Scott said that um, whatever Mr. Campbell did to him, that is Alexander Campbell did to him. He felt very offended. And in that day, they chose to settle their dispute by having a, 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 a duel. And a duel, folks, basically mean, if you look up the duel in a, in a dictionary, that is D-U-E-L. It is basically a, a formal fight between two people in which they used swords or guns to settle their quarrel. Whatever, whatever beef they had between them. Um, I know some of you saw these, these fights, you know, people had before. And they used to have swords. But in George Scott's case and Alexander's Campbell case, they fought with guns. And let me just give you a, a more detailed description as to how that quarrel was fought and Mr. George Scott end, ended up dying in the process. They had this quarrel, as I said, between them. They had this beef between them. And so they decided, you know something? Let us settle that once and for all. Um, I don't know if they had courts in them days. I don't know whether they didn't, they, they didn't want to go to any arbiters or whatever it is, but that was their way of settling whatever rift they had between them. They decided Mr. George would have a gun. Mr. Campbell would have a gun. And they would stand back to back from each other and walked 10 steps, make, made 10 steps from each other. So you, you can imagine they standing back to back, they making 10 steps away from each other now in the opposite direction and after the tenth step they would turn and shoot at each other and that folks i am being told again i want to repeat because i don't want people to say that i am just saying what i want off my head i am being told by two leading historians in dominica that is how mr george scott died they had this duel, and Mr. Campbell ended up shooting him in that formal fight over a quarrel that they had. As to the details of the quarrel, um, that is still kind of hazy, so I'll not want to get into that. But that is part and parcel of how he died. Now, when he died, his body, his entire body, was carried to the Newton area and was buried with his head at the Anglican Cemetery in Newton. As I said, if you go in the Newton Cemetery, you will be able to view a tombstone, a headstone, that depicts, here lies the body of Mr. Mr. George Scott. All right? So I just needed to give us that little historical perspective as to what happened to Mr. George Scott 
and he being the governor or deputy governor of Dominica from the year 1764 to 1767. All right. Now, Scott's head, just to wind up on that point, Scott's head, seeing that he was the governor during those three years, Scott's head basically was named in his honor as being his name was Scott and the piece of land that we are standing on now, I am standing on now, um, that, is a, that is a headland. So meaning that is a piece of land that stands out as a head. That is why this name, this name was, was bestowed onto this piece of Dominica called Scott's Head. And again, it had nothing to do with Mr. George Scott's head being on a stick at the time of his untimely death. All right, folks. So I just say I would just bring that to us in terms of a point of education this afternoon as we get into the meat of things this afternoon. That is what we're all about, providing the necessary information, providing the necessary education for our people. Because if a people, I personally believe, if a people don't know their history, then it will be very, very difficult for them to chat away forward to a bright and prosperous future. All right? Good. Let me just get my bearings going here. Now let me just let you see the 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 um the Sam's Raphael place up in that place they call I believe they call there Monakuma or something like that here. Yeah. Let me just pan on that place right here in Sufria now. We're looking at Sufria now. Let me just see if I can zoom in on Sam's Raphael place to see if you can see some of the resorts on that side of the mountain let me just see if you can right okay right here you see the mountain there friends i know it's kind of kind of hazy but if you see if you are seeing this little these little silverish brownish things in the foreground right up here in the mountain side that is sam's raphael place where he relocated his place the jungle bay that got destroyed or decimated after hurricane well not hurricane but but um, tropical storm erica in 2015 so he's right there under this mountain right here and i can tell you it's a very beautiful place um a number of cottages up there and some basically used the nature a lot of stones a lot of wood um, he preserved a lot of the trees in that area um, a lot of good stuff happening up there with Mr. Sam Raphael, okay? I know some folks in Dominica have issues with, with, with him in terms of he being a, a passport agent or passport peddler. But um, at the end of the day, I respect this man as a businessman. He has a good business brain. Um, it is people like that with that kind of acumen, that kind of brain that we really need to push Dominica forward on the map. So that is Sam's little place right here up in the Scotshead area, up in the Sufria area, sorry. Okay, persons who know Sufria very well will have a good idea of where that place is. All right, folks. Good. Let us get down to business now. Let us get down to business now. Let us get down to business. Lovely mountain in the foreground, right? Lovely. Dominica is a very beautiful place, folks. Very, very beautiful place. And we have to try our very best to preserve this country at all costs. Very, very beautiful place. Very beautiful. Okay, that is 
is pointing. We're looking down. We're staring down north now. Okay. Well, the sun basically has set already, but you could see the rays of the sun as it is slowly but surely dying in the horizon now as we speak. A beautiful sight. Somebody is right about now asking me for Mr. Matthias Pelty's number. <laughs> All right, let me that that we are, we are looking at north now. Let me just point in the southern direction. All right, that is facing south now. So if you go south, you will be meeting um, Matnik first. Matnik first, then Saint Lucia. And you move up, and you move up, and you move up. Right? Good. Okay, folks. Let us start now. Let us deal with Mr. Dennis Byron. This has to be remaining front and center on the agenda. As we move into another phase of Dominica's history. Folks, you heard the story very right that Sir Dennis Byron is invited to Dominica by none other than the person who sits in the seat of the Prime Minister today, and that is none other than Mr. Roosevelt Skerritt. A lot of persons in Dominica have a lot of issues with that invitation. Um, and I must say as well, some persons are of the opinion that they see nothing wrong in that. And so let all ideas contend. But from how I see it as a patriotic Dominican, I will just be trying to expound a little more on why I believe the invitation of Sir Dennis Byron to Dominica to do anything to do with our electoral system in this country, it should be rejected with all our might as Dominicans. Let us start with our Attorney General, Mr. Levi Peter. I heard making news in Dominica, Mr. Levi Peter said persons in Dominica, some persons in Dominica, and I would want to think he is referring to persons like myself, that we are tearing Mr. Byron apart. We are attacking his character. And what Mr. Levi Peters and the Cabal, whenever they speak about Mr. Byron coming to Dominica, what they do is push his credentials up front, high up on the agenda. Let me just pan this camera so you will see me live and live in color. What they do is that they push Mr. Dennis Byron's credentials high up on the agenda as he being a legal luminary they say he being in the past let's say 100 years one of the best in the region as it pertains to to legal matters which I agree with in part where I don't agree and where a number of persons don't agree with this government is where they are trying to shove down something our throats in Dominica and inviting Mr. Dennis Byron as chief or sole commissioner to do anything to do with electoral matters here. Let us get it very straight, folks. Let, let me jog back your memory. Do you remember Mr. Dennis Byron's role in trying to unite the Caribbean, as he said back then, into having the CCG as our final court of appeal? Can you remember that? That is where I really want to start because I think that is a pivotal point to, to, to have the conversation from that point so that we can better understand what is the role of Mr. Dennis Byron 
in our whole electoral matters here. I think that is a pivotal point where we need to start the conversation. Mr. Dennis Byron, he basically was the, was the, the voice behind the idea of the Caribbean as a region needing to move away from the CCJ as our final court of appeal. And he said, he proposed having our own do our matters in terms of our legal adjudications on matters. And he pushed that very, very hard when he held his post at the CCG as president and other portfolios right there. Some countries, I must say, they agreed with Mr. Byron in whole. And they went full steam ahead with their country making the CCG as, as their final court of appeal. And we have countries shots like Guyana, Barbados. We also have countries such like, well, our own Dominica is part of the CCG as well. And you, 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 if you remember the, the, the agitation that went around back then, some countries basically abstained from that idea. Oh, Belize is part of the CCG as well. So you have Belize, Dominica, Barbados, and Guyana. These are the four countries primarily that went full steam ahead with Mr. Dennis Byron's suggestion of making the CCG our final appellant court. I heard arguments on both sides and both arguments, they, they, they have merit. I must say they have merit um, in that some lawyers, some legal minds, even some ordinary persons are saying, you know something? We are talking about repatriation. We are talking about moving away from our colonizers. We are talking about being able to, to, to stand our own to fit. So, so if we are talking about that, why still have our, 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 our legal matters be part and parcel as part of the Privy Council? And these are, and some more are the reasons why persons are saying that we should move away from the Privy Council. Now, in Dominica, folks, you well remember in March of 2015, I believe, okay, March of 2015, Dominica, under the leadership of Roosevelt Skerritt, spoke about that in Dominica, but the people, the people who are being the, the governees of this government, did not even have a fair chance at saying to the government of the day, hey, yes, we want to be part of the CCJ, or no, we don't want to be part of the CCJ. This guy and his parliamentarians went to our House of Assembly and amended certain section of our constitution and have us as we speak, as the CCG, as our final court of appeal. And I am saying, I am saying, I love this, Jira, I am saying, that is not the principles of a true democracy. No. A true democracy, the people must have a say in the governance of the country. And when you had in March of 2015, in a very wholesale manner, the government of the day ran to parliament and have us in Dominica be part of a legal system as our final arbiter without me, without you being part and parcel of that conversation, it says something about the, the mindset of the persons at the wheel as it, as it pertains to governance and government. Other countries, Jamaica, 
Trinidad, you know the big guns. You have St. Lucia, Antigua. These persons did not dive. They did not plummet. They did not just go in a wholesale manner or fashion like we did in Dominica. Some are still contemplating the move, but God knows when they will join. Look, somebody saying on the live, which I cross-checked earlier, Antigua, they had a referendum and it was rejected twice by the people of Antigua. St. Lucia, when I did the research as well, they also had a referendum and it was again rejected by the people of St. Lucia. St. Vincent, I'm being told, they, they are talking about it still. But nothing solid in terms of amending their constitution to move across as yet. So folks, we have to ask the question, why? That is the critical question we have to ask ourselves. Why did we just move in a very hastily manner to join the CCG as our final court of appeal? And I am a person, I know, I have of the firm belief that wherever something happens, there is most times, 90% of the time, an opposite and equal reaction or action. Now, Dennis Byron, he, he punched the CCJ's idea in the region. Some went with him. The majority rejected him. Our own Roosevelt Skerritt accepted him. Now it is that same Byron that is appointed to look into our affairs of electoral matters here. Can you see the connection, folks? Are you making the connection? I'm being told. I am being told, my friends. I am being told. Sir so Dennis Byron is a very, very unhappy man where he is at today in his twilight years. Because his idea of uniting the Caribbean region through its legal system, though it may be a noble idea on paper, but in reality, a lot of the citizens, a lot of the governments of this region rejected him. Mr. What's his name? Sir Byron is a Ketisha. And St. Kitts rejected him on that offer of making St. Kitts and Nevis. The, 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 their final court of appeal, the CCG. And if, 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 if the Ketitians know better about Sir Dennis, I would want to think they would do better. And it speaks volumes why a Ketitian in the name of Sir Dennis Byron could not have his suggestion or his proposal be approved by his own people. What do they know about Sir Dennis Byron that we did not know or still don't know? The question is on the table, folks. I will, let, I will leave you to answer that question. And so they say what goes around comes around. And, and it is that same Sir Dennis Byron in his retirement now, having gained that level of experience at the CCG, being that legal luminary as they call him, is he scary now and his cabal is looking to as the sole commissioner to come and tell us 
how we in Dominica should fix our electoral business. And that's, folks, I can tell you, it is a point to take note of as we move into that whole fiasco of this government reaching out to Sir Dennis Byron to have anything to do with our electoral matters here. Keep that point front and center. Keep it focused. Let us remain focused on that as we move into a new era in Dominica where our electoral machinery or process is concerned, folks. Mr. David Joseph, thank you for your comment, brother. Mr. David Joseph is saying, Sir Dennis Byron cannot know more about electoral reform than the lawyers advising the OAS, CARICOM, and the Commonwealth. Therefore, it is foolish for anyone to believe that Dennis Byron is the answer to our electoral reform rules. It is clear that Roosevelt's spirit has an agenda, and it would seem that Sir Dennis Byron fits right into Roosevelt's spirit scheme of things. Mr. Joseph, I cannot agree with you more, my brother. I cannot agree with you more. It is getting a bit dark, folks. The lights are on in the um, village of Scott's Head. So I think I need to put a little light on my face now so that you can see me a little better. So just take a good view of Scott's Head still whilst I set up that lighting. Okay, I think we have we have some we have some lighting now. We have some light. <laughs> Carol, Carol says lovely view. Carol, let me let me let you see your view still instead of my ugly face. Okay, Carol. <laughs> Carol said lovely view. Okay, Carol, that is that is Scott said by night. See so this. Is, there's still some light on the. On the mountain top. Okay, there's still a little light on the mountain top. Good. All right, but let us get back to business. Now, I guess I I invaded. I invaded the space of the the moustiques and the little creatures that fly by night. So as my light came on, they are now all over my light. So you'll be seeing me making little moves now and then in terms of getting them away, but that is just to keep them away from me as much as possible. All right, folks, but it is all well and good. We are part of nature, so we should expect all that. Let me just brighten up that light a little more so I can, I can move a little away. I can move a little away. Good. That is much better lighting. So I can move a little away now so that um, we can have a... The flies won't be too much in my, in my face, pussy. All right, good. So we were talking about Mr. Byron and trying to build a case now why we should reject Dennis Byron in coming here to do anything about electoral matters, people. 
Dennis Byron cannot, and I agree with Mr. Joseph 110%, he cannot come here in Dominica to tell us anything that is too far from what the OAS, what the CARICOM people, what the Commonwealth Secretariat has already told us what we should do to fix our situation in Dominica. We also had a joint body in Dominica made out of church, business, um, unions, civil, um, civil organizations. We had that body. They basically came up with a report as well. Clearly putting down on paper, in print, what we should do as a people to fix our electoral system in Dominica. And so Dennis Byron, though I respect him as a legal mind, Dennis Byron should now be addressing himself with the legal matters as it pertains to our electoral system, not come in and make recommendations to us. We, 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 we are bombarded with recommendations over recommendations over recommendations. We are bombarded. So what is Mr. Dennis Byron really and truly coming here to do? And it can only, it can only folks work out two ways. And let me explain to you the two ways this can work out where Sir Dennis Byron is concerned and all business in Dominica. One way. Dennis Byron can come here and say, you know something? After looking at all these recommendations, after speaking to persons, after having discussions with the parties and all stakeholders concerned, let me put it to you again, Roosevelt's carrot, that you need to stick with those recommendations and do the reforms in the interest of Dominicans. That is one scenario. The other scenario, my friends, that Dennis Byron could come here and, and, and do is he could come here and like Roosevelt and Levi and the others, dash away all the recommendations that has already gone forth and say, you know something? Let me agree with a man like Lennox Lawrence and say, you know something? That five-year regulation in our electoral laws, it is, it is archaic. And let me facilitate you to get rid of that five-year regulation. I'm um, regulation, sorry. And so he will basically be helping Roosevelt's carry to steal another or other elections in Dominica. Because remember, folks, remember, in 2017, this Labour Party government, and note me, I'm not saying the government, this Labour Party, they went to our parliament with the intention to make bribery and treating legal in our elections. They went there to do that. It was as a result of the people standing and saying, you know something, Roosevelt? This has been on our books from timely memorial where bribery and treating was and still is illegal. And so we will not help you to continue to abuse the people in Dominica where our rights are concerned. And so the persons in Dominica, we stood up vehemently. We spoke in a very vociferous tone against that move by Roosevelt's carry then. And so he, he, he stepped it aside. He, he basically laid it down. Remember his words. He said that he would bring them back on the table, but the temperature was too high then to continue with such a move. So he, he basically stepped it down. Now, are we seeing from 2017 into 2020 uh, a bringing back of those same kind of amendments through Sir Dennis Byron? Are we, are we seeing that, folks? 
is, is that is what is on the horizon? And so, Mr. Dennis Byron, sir, I am making a special plea to you tonight through this medium, brother. In my estimation, you have already tarnished your character by accepting from Roosevelt's carrot this bogus appointment to come to Dominica and have a say in our electoral business here. You have already did that. So, Mr. Levi Peters, it is not me, it is not anybody that is trying to tarnish the name of Sir Dennis Byron. Sir Dennis Byron has already done that by his own volition. So, let us get that clear and straight up on the table. It is not nobody. It is Dennis Byron by himself accepting that offer from Roosevelt to come to Dominica to deal with our electoral machinery. It is he has already did damage to himself and his character. Okay? So let's 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 get that clear. Good. Secondly, Mr. Dennis Byron would have by me, I am saying by me, right? Got a little, a little pass. Let's say if he had said, you know something? Um, I'm coming to Dominica to help out these guys because I'm hearing the cry, even if the government had invited him. But I'm going to do that for the people pro bono. I'm going to do that for the people um, without any cost to them. I would say, okay. Dennis Byron is a man that he has a little saltiness in him left as it pertains to character. But you picking up or alleged to have been picked up already 50% of that $450,000 to do work, that is, not, that is not right, brother. That is certainly not right. Folks, as I told you, I, 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 I invaded... I invaded the space of our little boys here. So they are a bit troublesome. But just, just bear with me. But I, I love the outdoor. Dennis Byron, it is alleged, he has already picked up half of that money because the, 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 the terms and reference of his work, of his appointment stated publicly, that is, he would have started that process on the 1st of September and it would run through 31st December. And his deposit is half of 450. That is 225. So if, as per what is in the public domain already, Sir Dennis Byron has already picked up 225,000 as per what is in the public domain, I am just repeating that, and that came from the government circles. That is the terms and reference of his appointment. Can you imagine, folks, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are in a time of uncertainty where COVID is concerned and you have one man picking up $450,000 over a three-month period? And not only that, he has to be housed, he has to be fed, he has to be driven around, he has to have a staff. You have to have all the perks that come with it. You have to be entertained. And so, at the end of the day, we may well pass the $500,000 figure. A man like Dennis Byron. And I'm being told as well, folks, I'm being told as well, when a man of Dennis Byron caliber would have resigned from his position and we're talking about like lawyers now you know I'm, I am being reliable told that now it is a uh, it is not written so you can go and read it anywhere but it is like a code of ethics among them as lawyers as as legal people that they should not pick up any high powered job not under three years. Especially where money is involved. 
So I am just saying, Mr. Dennis Byron is a retired legal mind. And if what I am hearing is true from another legal mind who, who ought to know what is happening among them, Dennis Byron, out of his own code of ethics that he should know about, should not have subjected himself to that kind of offer, monetary offer, from Roosevelt and co. And so we have to keep note of that as well. And so folks, they said that the, the proof the, the proof of the pudding is in its eating. And the proof of this eating, where our electoral business is concerned, is certainly is in the eating. And I cannot command, I cannot demand of anybody what to do when Sir Dennis Byron gets here. I can only tell you what I will be doing as a patriot, patriotic Dominicans where my right is concerned. And I am saying, when I weigh that matter, Mr. Dennis Byron has been found wanting. And so on that note, on that note, I will not be attending any function where Dennis Byron is concerned. Can you imagine, at this present time, we don't have a functioning electoral commission? Can you imagine that? So when Dennis Barons come here, I would want to think, knowing this government, how they operate in their very shady ways, they will just plug in one of their square pegs as, as commissioner. And he or she, being that square peg in a wrong hole, will just grab onto those recommendations, whatever it is, even if they are working against the will of the people, and say, yes, Sir Dennis, we agree with you from the commissioner's, commissioner's end standpoint. That is what is going to happen, folks. Because as we speak now, today, Saturday, the 3rd of October, there is not a functioning commissioner in place. There's none. Maybe there will be one tomorrow, but there's none tonight. So when those recommendations are made, I am now wondering who is going to accept those recommendations from Byron to, to, to vet it and to say yes or no in that regard, where that independent or that supposedly independent body is concerned. I'm just wondering, I'm wondering, Roosevelt Skerritt invited, as I said before, a, 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 a tri-party commission here from CARICOM, OAS, Commonwealth Secretariat, to make recommendations. That was, that was June of last year, June of 2019. These people, they came, they did their work, they spoke to stakeholders, they did whatever they had to do. I was part of that fact-finding mission. They did their work. Now a lot of persons are saying on the other side, why wasn't there this big hue and cry about um, when he invited them back then? We, we did not make any hue and cry about them back then because these persons are, these organizations that they come from are August bodies, meaning they are quote-unquote bona fide bodies. They have responsibilities to deal with electoral matters in the different jurisdictions around the globe. So in the interest of good governance, in the interest of peace, in the interest of not, not having them say, you know something, we invited these bodies here and all he was in uproar. No, we said, you know something, let us go, let us participate in the process and see what comes out as recommendations. And you know what they recommended? A 
voter ID cards. You know what they recommended? A total re-registration, a purging, a cleansing of all this. That in principle is what they recommended. But guess what, folks? Guess what? Before these recommendations from these people could even see the light of the day, they maybe they maybe these recommendations maybe didn't even properly land on the desk yet of the man who is in the seat of the prime minister. He had his attorney general, Levi Peter, who by the way is supposed to be working in the interest of the people as attorney general. But Levi Peters to me. That is my assessment of the man. He is working in the interest of the government or of the Labour Party because he came out swinging in June or July of 2019 and said, OAS, Commonwealth, CARICOM, you know something? We well invited all you here, but what all you said to us, that is rubbish. You all work way in were in vain because you all did not say what we wanted you guys to say so we are just we are just throwing that in the rubbish bin like cat litter that is the that is the attitude that came about with the reaction by these people levi peter came out swinging he said these recommendations are unworkable what did he mean by that unworkable what is so unworkable about giving a people a vote ID card? What is so unworkable about cleaning a lease? What is so unworkable about making an election process freer and fairer? What, what, what is so unworkable about it? He went on to say it will cause confusion. It will cause confusion among the people. You know how long Dominica and Dominicans have been on this road for electoral reform? You know how long, folks? Umpteen years, my friends. Umpteen years. Like my friend Lumumba said, years without number. And finally, Levi said, in the interest of time there was insufficient time oh he also said there was not enough money eh? he also said that it was too expensive can you imagine a government headed by roosevelt saying that when monies are spent on all other business other than the business of the people Roosevelt alone is picking up as we speak pretty close to 70,000 EC for his accommodation folks. Easy. Every month. You know what $70,000 can mean for a village like where I'm at tonight? You know what $70,000 could mean for the hospital? You know what $70 could mean for the education ministry? You know what $70,000 could mean for the ordinary worker in Dominica that is still operating some of them at $4.05 per hour? Do you know what $70,000 could mean in a struggling economy like Dominica? amidst this COVID-19 saga and the list goes on and on and on but this government would want to fool you they are not fooling me and tell you that to bring about a freer and fairer electoral system there's insufficient funds that is not even laughable. It is past laughable, folks. It is past laughable.
So, on the matter of Mr. Dennis Byron, I am saying, and that is my choice as a Dominican, I will not be attending any function where Dennis Byron is present. Because the same way Roosevelt and co. invited these bodies to come here last year to do or say anything about electoral business, we, I, waste, wasted my time. I sat with these people, with a number of other people, for at least an hour or more. So this hour of mine was wasted. He just threw the recommendations right out. And I am saying, I am not prepared to waste any more time. So the same treatment he gave these people back then, and myself back then, it is the same treatment I am going to afford Sir Dennis Byron by not wasting my time to go and sit with him to talk about reforms in Dominic anymore. That to me will be a waste of my time. And so as I said, I cannot tell anybody what to do, but that is my recommendations to me. And if you want to adopt it as organizations, as individuals, if and when you are asked to come around a table to sit with Byron, then that is up to you. Because I for sure will not be legitimizing any move, any motive by this government to take away my right in my country. I will not be legitimizing that move. You know what the main architect, you know what the main architect, the main spin bowler of the Labour Party said soon after the stolen election in 2019? And I'm speaking about none other than Astafan. You know what he said? He said, why complain about a stolen election? When you guys were part of it, you participated in it. That is what he said. Why complain? You were part and parcel of it. You consented to the uneven playing field you are speaking about now. So once beaten, twice shy. I am not prepared to participate in no uneven playing field where this government and my right is concerned. End of story. So Mr. Dennis Byron should be able to get a very rude awakening from the people of Dominica when, if he gets to Dominica. That is my suggestion. You don't have to take it, but I have seen that script already in Dominica where this government is concerned and I'm not prepared to throw the line anymore. You have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. And this is my time as a citizen to stand for my country. And Dennis Byron coming here, I will not be facilitating him to make any recommendations for this government to take to parliament. No way, Jose. I will not legitimize his coming here. There's a, there's a, there's a, how you call it? There's a, there's a level of disjointedness. There's a level of ambiguity in terms of that's the Dennis Byron saga. And I am not privy, I am not in a position to tell anybody, any party, any organizations what to do with Sir Dennis Byron when he gets here as it relates to his invitation to them but I am saying I am not part and parcel of nothing where Dennis Byron is concerned that is my prerogative that is my right and I I I, I know I reserve my right to exercise my right So folks, that is, what is the time? 6.37. We already gone past. Well, we started about 20 past, so we're about an hour and 10 minutes into our presentation. Five minutes again and I will wind up. 
So that is it, basically in a nutshell, my little chit chatty for us this afternoon, which basically fell into the night. Um, any person now on the live, please feel free to make a suggestion, ask any question you may want to ask. This is our time. This is our five minutes wind down time. Carol saying here, Carol Bruni, good afternoon to you, saying here, they all said that the election was free and fair, and that's is a lie and i agree with you a hundred percent carol let me just see if i can read some of the comments here um mr bruno good evening to you my brother um my brother goes under the name reggae music good evening to you as well always good teresa is saying or replying to marshall sorry marshall lawrence is replying to to susanna rule teresa rule civil servants don't work for four dollars and five cents an hour that's minimum for another for other workers like restaurants house helpers the people who clean the parks okay i understand your comment brother but at the end of the day it is on the books four dollars and five cents that is the minimum wage in dominica and that is what i'll be mentioning from time and time over i understand i understand that um some persons in Dominica are getting a little more than four dollars and five cents and praise God for that but I can tell you nobody in Dominica is drawing at least eight or nine dollars like St. Kitts or the Kittitians are, are enjoying now so be it four dollars and five cents which is the minimum to about six dollars five fifty there about six seventy five there about that is still below the, 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 the wage line where uh, 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 a proper pay for a proper day's work is concerned as it pertains to me where I'm concerned. Mary Joyce said, Levi Peter said the recommendations would cost a lot of money, but he's not against the money for Sir Byron getting. Yes, Mary Jo, I agree with you 100%. Earl Bruno said he never had integrity in the first place. Um, well, I want to agree with you as well, Mr. Bruno. Mali Ostri, good evening to you. I'm just trying to run through some comments here um, before I wind down this little live section session. Sorry, with us here, Miss um, Latricia. Good evening to you, my sister. <laughs> Hope you're taking good care. John Alfred, good evening to you. Um, he's what you call a political parasite. Yes, you, you speak in the Queen's English, John Alfred, but that's good. Thank you very much for your comment. Um, Lilac Rose is saying his integrity is right out of the window, but birds of a feather always flock together. And I want to agree with you, Lilac, on this one. Let me get back to that comment of Marshall. He said the kind of money with civil servants still stuck at ec four dollars and five cents luca dominica papa so that is what mr lawrence is saying here um a lot of other persons are commenting but i just want to just run through a couple before i end here tonight with us um or i say lofty i thought recommendations already paid for wait 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 Lofty, I thought recommendations were already paid for electoral reform. So what exactly is he coming for? Um, well, on, on, on that point, Aura, I remember very well when I sat with these bodies last year. They told us that um, they would be willing to even bear the cost of implementing some of the reforms that they made to us. So your question is in order as it pertains to the kind of money that we are hearing being dispensed now for this kind of reform. So yes, your comment is in order, my friend. Let me just scroll back down before I take a little. Um, Werner McGlaw, this is foolishness in them. This is foolishness in them. Got some outside to get. Oh, Werner, your, your comment is a bit... Of a mouthful. Let me see if I can take it slow. This is foolishness 
in them get some outside to get involved in what is going on in Dominic. I, I get the sense. I get the gist of what you're saying. I guess you're talking about the non-interference. Um, Celia Gordon is saying, good evening, Lofty. Who did they sell the public works to? Okay, on that public works, <laughs> on that public works matter, Celia, let me just tell you straight up that um, I just quenched my foot for a little while. On that public works matter, it's a good thing that you reminded me to just touch on that a little bit. I certainly will not be getting deep into that public works matter tonight because I always want my word to be like a check that is not a robbery one. I always want when you get my word, you can go literally take it to the bank and get cash. I have been doing my research this week to bring you the people of Dominica that information. But for some reason, there is some strange occurrences that is happening. Um, and so in a subsequent announcement, I will be making public to you or mention to you what I've been getting in terms of some names, some corporations, some companies that I am being told that, um, <laughs> that um, have bought the Public Coast Corporation. But I am not, I don't want to preempt anything. I love to do my investigation. Let me get it lock, stock, and barrel airtight, and then I can release it to you. But I did some investigations last week. Re the name or names of persons who have bought our public works um, um, site. And it is very, very interesting the names that I'm hearing, the names that I'm coming up with. But as I told you, the, the paperwork, the evidence to back it up, it is, it is proving to be a little challenging for the meantime. But there are, there are a number of ways to skin a cat, they say. So if one way doesn't work, then I will be, I will be, um, I will be looking into other directions. But for now, let me just keep it, keep it away from the public domain for now. But I can tell you, you need to keep your eyes on Dominica, folks. Because what I can tell you now for a fact, Dominica is being bought right under our nose or our noses by Dominicans, persons who are Dominicans. And they are very fearful. They are very scared in making their names be made public as to their interference in purchasing of Dominica. And so they are hiding it under all kind of names. But, as Bob Marley say, Nassio backed him up. The good book says it. Whatever is happening in the dark, it will come out in the light. So, we're just working on that. We're just working on that. Yes, Adelaide, thank you very much as well. Um, anyway, this nonsense regarding Roosevelt's way of implementing electoral reform needs to stop. I agree with you very much. And again, it is the people, we the people, that must come together to ensure that that happens in earnest. Um, that is it for me, folks. Let me just thank you for your time. Always a pleasure to see you, the people of Dominica. Tonight was, a, a, how I would call it, a very adventurous night. I must say, with all my little creatures keeping me company here tonight. But I guess I am in default. I take my blame. I invaded their space tonight. So whatever I get from them, then I will have to take. But it was fun speaking with us speaking to you and always interacting with you every every time so folks still we see um well next week sunday from five o'clock we will be in a different location i want to thank you for your ears thank you for your listening and please continue to have your country my country dominica at the front and at the center of your memory as we move along as a people all right folks Thank you very much. Remember tomorrow I'll be on Q95 with Civic Vibes. That is another community-based project or program where we are trying to bring young persons in particular on board with the program of Standing Up for Country. 
because I, I, I truly believe, that is my belief, where we are now in our country, some of our adult aged people, they have already gone. Dominica does not have a future with our adult population. And I believe wholly and truly it is our young people, the 15s and 20s and 25s and 30s, that will rise to the occasion and bring Dominica to the place that we all want it to be. So that is the persons that I really working with right now to, to help bring Dominica out of the cesspool from where it is. So we'll be there with the young persons tomorrow. They'll be having a topic of interest to them, but that is a way of guiding these young persons to stand up for your country, my country, their country, Dominica. So we'll be on radio tomorrow from 1 to 3 p.m. That is a program called Civic Vibes. It is a program where we try to reintroduce Dominicans to civics because without that civic minded man, without that civic minded woman, Dominica is nowhere. We need to go back to the basics and don't get too caught up in that level of you know vanity and everything that comes with it. Dominica is ours to build. Let us stay focused, folks. And no matter what we may be going through now, our days may be looking very dim and gloomy now. But once we stick to that task, we will see a much brighter and prosperous Dominica. Thank you, folks. Yes, 1 to 3 p.m. See you tomorrow on Civic Vibes. All right. Thank you, Dominica. Bye-bye now. I love you. Take care of yourselves. Continue to enjoy the rest of your evening.